Hello guys! So welcome sa ating fifth part ng ating topic na design of T-beams and other non-rectangular beams. So dito sa video na to guys, ay ituturo ko sa inyo yung shortcut method ng pagdi-design ng T-beams and other non-rectangular beams. No, pero mas maganda guys, no, na bago nyo panuorin itong video na to, ay mapanood nyo muna yung first hanggang fourth part ng video para mas maintindihan nyo guys yung long method kasi uh, bale this one is a short cut lang siya na method. So, hindi ko na masyadong i-explain guys yung ating mga uh, solution dito kasi na-explain ko na siya ng mas malalim sa long dis sa long na method. Okay? So, i-review muna natin guys yung steps sa traditional long design method. So, eto guys yung ating steps sa ating traditional na long design method. So, una is kinocompute natin muna yung ating MN using yung ating MU equals to VMN. Tapos, nag tayo guys ng initial value ng Z. Okay, tapos nagkukumpi tayo ng A sub S, then A, C, then Z, then A, S na po, then A, C, then Z. Paulit-ulit lang siya hanggang sa uh, yung ating value ng ating A sub S ay maging constant. Okay, so or hindi na siya maging mag-change ng value. Okay, sa shortcut design method guys, ito yung ating uh, steps. So, ganun pa din guys. Una, eh, sige, kukumpi natin yung ating M sub N. Gamit pa din yung MU equals to VMN. And then second is kailangan natin i-find out kung yung A ba natin ay mag exceed sa height ng flange or not. And then after that, kailangan natin i-compute si A. And then, i-compute natin si A sub S. So, mabilis lang siya guys. No? Wala na tayong iteration dito. And hindi na natin kailangan mag-assume uh, ng value ng Z. Okay? Tapos, magpaikot-ikot dun sa may uh, cycle na M, uh, na AS, AC, and that saka tsaka Z. Okay? So, i-compare natin guys yung dalawang method. Ano ba yung difference ng dalawang ito? So, ito yung guys yung ating dalawang method na yun. Okay? So, yung unang pagkakaiba nila is dito sa traditional long design method, kailangan natin mag-assume ng Z. Okay? So, as assumption for Z is needed. Samantalang dito sa shortcut, wala tayong kailangan i-assume na value ng Z. No? Kasi diba, yung assumption for Z na yan is ginagamit natin guys para sa iteration dito sa my cycle na to. Okay? So, yun yung ating parang start ng ating iteration. So, dito hindi na natin kailangan guys mag-assume ng value ng Z. Pero kailangan natin i-find out kung mag exceed nga si A sa, sa H sub F or hindi. No? So, meron konti ditong assumption ng konti, no? pero hindi siya, kat, hindi siya magiging start ng iteration. Okay, then pangalawang difference nila guys is, of course, kailangan ng iteration dito sa ating traditional long design method. Samantalang dito sa shortcut design method ay walang iteration na kailangan. Okay, yung pangatlong difference nito is yung reason kung bakit hindi kailangan mag-assume ng Z and hindi kailangan ng iteration sa shortcut design method. No? It's because sa traditional method guys, yung ginagamit natin na equation is yung MN is equals to T times Z. That is tension force times the distance between tension and compression force. Samantala dito sa shortcut design method, yung ginagamit natin na equation is yung nominal moment is equals to compression force times Z. No? So, bale, ito yung main difference nila, guys. No? Ito yung main difference nila kung bakit uh, walang iteration na mangyayari sa shortcut design method. Okay, so para mas maintindihan nyo guys, yung, uh, ibig, sabi, yung ibig kong sabihin doon sa pinagsasabi ko kanina, no, ay i-discuss natin guys ulit yung example problem number one. So dito, this time, no, ay gagamitin natin yung shortcut design method. So kung gusto nyo i-review guys, yung solution natin sa traditional long design method, ay balik lang kayo sa part 2 ng ating video na ito no yung design of T-beams and other non-rectangular beams no so balik lang kayo guys dun sa part 2 then nandoon yung ating uh, solution nito sa traditional long design method okay so ngayon no i-solve natin siya using the shortcut design method okay so yun so of course no hindi ko na yan no guys no so bali given yung dead moment live moment tapos F sub C prime, F sub Y, tsaka simple span. So, of course, guys, again, wala tayo dito. Yung hindi given sa problem is yung S sub W, that is clear distance from web to web. So, of course, kailangan natin siyang i-compute. So, lalabas ay 2,700 millimeters. Okay? Then, after that, kailangan natin, of course, i-compute din si B sub F, that is effective flange width. So, yun, B sub F, kailangan natin siyang i-compute. So, gamit itong... Um, Provisions mula sa NSCP, no, ay makukompute natin si B sub F as the least of the three equations. 
natin nandito, and that is 1,800 millimeters. So, least value niya is uh, 1,800, so yun na yung ating effective flange width. Okay, so next. No, of course, no, dito na tayo magsa-start, guys, ng ating um, shortcut design method. So, dito sa ating shortcut, kailangan natin i-compute muna ulit si M sub N. So, ayun. So, compute for M sub N. So, para i-compute si M sub N, that is M sub U is equals to phi M N. So, of course, uh, M N yung ating kailangan. So, M sub U divided by phi. So, M U, makukompute natin siya as 1.2 times dead moment plus 1.6 times live moment. So, of course, uh, makukompute natin yung ating M sub U as 347.16. Given na naman, guys, again, yung ating dead moment at live moment, nandito siya sa ating table kasi given na siya. Okay? Of course, yung ating fee na gagamitin is 0.90 kasi nga gusto natin iset siya as tension control. nag design kasi tayo, guys. So, gusto natin ng tension control. Okay? Then, M sub N natin lalabas is 385.733 kN meter. Okay, so now, para sa ating second step, we need to find out whether yung A natin ay mag exceed sa height ng flange or not. So we have to find out, again, if yung A ay mag exceed sa uh, height ng flange. So maaring ito yung mangyari, guys. No, maaring nandito, guys, yung ating uh, neutral axis. So ito yung ating A. So ito yung ating area ng compression concrete. And ito nga yung ating A. Okay? Or maaring ito yung mangyari, as in, lalampas yung ating neutral axis sa ating flange, so mapapunta siya dito sa web, and ito yung ating magiging area ng compression concrete at yung ating A ay mas malaki compared sa H sub F. So, maaaring yung A natin ay mas maliit kaysa sa H sub F or mas malaki kaysa sa H sub F. Okay? So, yun. So, para ma-find out natin, guys, kung lalampas ba yung A sa H sub F or not, no? So, yun. So, to guide us whether yung, kung yung A ba ay lalampas sa ating H sub F or not, we need to compute M sub N when the value of A is equals to H sub F. So, ano yung ibig sabihin nito guys, no? We have to assume first na yung ating area ng compression concrete is yung buong flange, okay? Then, we are going to compute the nominal moment kung yun nga yung ating case. Again, kung yung ating area ng ating compression concrete is yung buong flange. So, ang tawag natin dyan, guys, is natawagin natin siyang MN flange kasi yung buong flange nga yung ating area ng compression concrete. So, madali lang naman, guys, iba? Yung ating M sub N is equal to tension force times Z o di kaya uh, compression force times Z. Pero ito yung ating gagamitin guys dito, yung compression force times Z kasi dun sa long design method yung ginamit natin is yung tension force times Z. Okay, so ano yung idea natin guys? Bakit natin i-compute nga yung ating MN flange na yan? Okay, kasi i-compare natin guys yung MN flange sa ating nominal moment na required which is 385.733 kilonewton meter. No? Pag kinumpare natin yung MN flange at saka yung ating M sub N, malalaman na natin kung yung A ba ay lalampas sa H sub F or hindi. Okay, bakit? Ano ba yung idea na to guys? No? Take note na kapag kamaliit guys yung ating area ng compression concrete, no, maliit yung ating M sub N. Ngayon, no, habang yung ating neutral axis is papapa ng pababa, no, lumalaki yung ating area ng compression concrete and papalaki ng papalaki yung ating M sub N. Okay? So, ganito yung idea nun, guys. Bakit natin i-compare si MN flange kay M sub N, no? Kasi take note, guys, kung yung ating MN flange nga ay mas malaki compared sa M sub N, ibig sabihin, sumobra tayo ng area ng compression concrete, no? Kasi nga, di ba, mas malaki yung ating area ng compression concrete, mas malaki yung ating M sub N, okay? So, ibig sabihin, guys, so ngayon, assume natin na yung ating area ng compression concrete is yung buong flange, tapos naging mas malaki yung ating MN dun kaya sa ating actual or required na M sub N, then ibig sabihin, sumobra tayo ng area, no? So, ayun, so ibig sabihin nito guys, na yung ating, kung yung ating MN flange is mas malaki kaysa sa M sub N, ibig sabihin, sumobra tayo ng area, so yung ating area ng compression concrete is nasa flange lang siya, mas maliit pa siya kaysa sa flange, Okay. Ngayon, kung ating, kung ating M sub N flange is mas maliit kaysa sa ating nominal moment, ibig sabihin neto, kulang pa yung ating compression area, so kailangan pa natin uh, extend guys yung ating neutral axis sa baba, so ibig sabihin the compression area extends down to the web. So, ayun. So, ngayon na, i-compute natin, guys, yung ating MN flange, and that is equals to C or compression force times Z. 
Ayun. So, of course, compression force natin is 0.85 F sub C prime, A sub C times D minus A over 2. Of course, A sub C natin is, ito yung ating compression area, that is B sub F times A. Okay, so ito na nga yun. Okay, tapos of course, yung gagamitin natin dito na A is yung equal, is yung H sub F. So, yung H sub F natin guys is 100 millimeters. So, that is H. Okay, ito na nga yun. So, of course, nalabas dito guys, M sub N flange natin is 1,689.12 times 10 to the 6 Newton millimeter. So, kapag kinonvert natin to guys sa kilonewton meter, lalabas is 1,689.12 kilonewton meter. Ngayon, ikukumpare natin siya sa ating MN na 385.73T. So, ano yung mas malaki guys? Di ba yung MN, MN flange yung mas malaki? So, ibig sabihin guys, kung yung ating area ng compression concrete ay buong flange, mas malaki yung area ng compression concrete nun kaya sa ating required na area para sa ating MN. No? Ibig sabihin, ang nangyari ka is since mas malaki nga siya, then kailangan nating bawasan yung ating area ng compression concrete. So therefore, the compression area is in the flange. That is, A must be less than H sub F. So ibig sabihin guys, ito yung nangyari na case. So dahil nga dyan guys, no, Alam na natin guys na yung ating A is less than H sub F. So, kailangan natin ngayon i-compute yung ating value ng ating A. No? Yun na yung ating next na step. We have to compute the value ng A. So, para i-compute yung A, ibabalik lamang natin yung ating formula guys no? sa pag-compute ng M sub N. So, ito na nga guys yung actual natin na case. No? So, i-compute lamang natin dito yung ating M sub N. So, para sa value sa ating M sub N, M sub N is equal to compression force times Z. So, ayun, so, ayun, same pa rin na formula, guys. Of course, yung ating value ng A is yung unknown na natin dito. Kasi meron na tayong M sub N. Ito yung 385.733. Okay, F sub C prime natin is given sa problem sa 27.6 megapascal. B sub F natin is 1,800 millimeters. And yung ating effective depth is given 450 millimeters. So, yung A lang yung unknown natin dito, guys. So, ang lalabas natin na value dito ng A is 20.78 millimeters. Okay, so ngayon na na-compute na natin ga guys yung ating A na 20.78 millimeters, we will now have to compute the A sub S. Ito na yung ating final na magiging sagot. Wala nang iteration guys. So para ma-compute guys yung ating A sub S, we have to uh, equate yung compression force sa tension force. Diba? So of course, alam natin yung formula ng compression force at yung tension force. So of course, no? F sub C primes given, A sub C ma-compute natin siya as 1,800 times A, di ba? B sub F times A, di ba ito nga yung ating area ng compression concrete, is equals to A sub S times F sub Y. So, bali no, dito, ang ating lamang unknown is A sub S. So, ang lalabas na A sub S is 2,120.97 square millimeters. So, take note guys, ito na yung ating sagot dun sa long design na method, di ba? So, try nyo yung i-review guys dun sa part 2 ng ating video na ito yung ating sagot dun. So, ayun. So, ito yung shortcut na method. Mas madali siya kasi wala siyang iteration or wala tayong mga assume-assume na, na kailangan. So, ayun. Okay, so dito tayo guys sa example problem number 2. I-resolve natin siya using yung shortcut design na method. So, ayun. So, same pa rin guys. I-compute natin yung ating S sub W and lalabas dito is 57 inches. Again, yung ating S sub W is the face-to-face -face distance ng ating web. Okay, so ngayon na no, i natin yung ating B sub F and yung lalabas natin na B sub F is 63 inches because that is the least value galing sa ating ACI na code. Okay, so pag in natin yung ACI na code. So 63 inches yung ating B sub F. So yun, so bali no, after pag-compute ng B sub F ay magsa-start na yung ating method ng shortcut. Okay, so bali no, i-compute natin si M sub N ngayon. So M sub N. Para makompute natin si B, sa M sub N, that is M sub U is equals to phi M N. So, of course, makakompute natin si M sub U, that is 1.2 multiplied by the dead moment plus 1.6 multiplied by the live moment. So, lalabas dyan is 920 keep feet. And, of course, no, yung ating phi na gagamitin is 0.90 because we want our T-beam to become tension controlled. So, that is 0.90. Okay, so M sub N natin na required para sa ating design is 1022.222, that is keep feet. Okay, so ngayon, we are, we are now going to find out if A will exceed H sub F or not. Okay, so ibig sabihin, kailangan natin malaman kung ito ba yung mangyayari, ibig sabihin yung ating A ay nasa uh, flange pa, 
or eto yung mangyayari na kung saan yung A natin ay nasa web na. Okay? So, para magawa natin, guys, yan, no? para ma-find out natin kung yung A ba ay lalampas sa H sub F or not, then, kailangan natin ulit nga i-compute si M sub N when the value of A is equals to H sub F. So, again, guys, no, same lang kanina, no, yung ating uh, assumption is, uh, i-assume natin na yung ating um, area ng compression concrete is yung buong flange, tapos yung compute natin, guys, yung ating M and flange gamit yung assumption na yan. Okay, so of course, no, gagamitin natin yung M and equals to compression force times Z. Again, guys, no, ulitin lang natin, no, kung yung ating M and flange is mas malaki kaysa sa M and, then yung compression area natin is in the flange. Pero kung yung, kung yung ating M and flange is mas maliit kaysa sa M and, then yung compression area natin extends down to the web or nasa web na nga yung ating compression area. Wabot na hanggang web. Okay, so yun, so i-compute natin, guys, si M and flange, that is C times Z. Okay, so that is 0.85F sub C prime times A sub C times D minus A over 2. Okay, and then of course, ang ating gagamitin dito na A is equals to H sub F, which is given 3 inches. Nandito siya sa ating table. Okay, then of course, makukumpute natin si M and flange, which is 10,843,875 pound inch. Okay, so pag kinonvert natin to guys, so keep feet, ito yung lalabas na yung 0.65625 keep feet. Now, we are going to compare this to M sub N. So, ang mangyayari, yung M and flange natin ay mas maliit compared sa M sub N. So, ibig sabihin guys, na compression area natin will extend down to the web. So, ibig sabihin guys, ito yung mangyayari sa ating T-beam. The, the compression area extends down to the web, so yung ating A will be greater than H sub F. So ngayon guys, alam na natin that our A will exceed H sub F. So ngayon, kailangan nating i-compute kung hanggang saan ba yung ating area ng ating compression concrete. Okay, so ang gagawin natin dito guys is ihiwalay natin yung area ng ating compression concrete into 2. So bali no, ihiwalay natin guys yung ating area ng ating compression concrete sa my flange sa area ng ating compression concrete sa my web. So ibig sabihin guys, yung ating A dito is yung H sub F plus itong maliit na height na to which is natawagin natin siyang A sub W. Okay, so bali no, ang gagawin natin is again nga, ihiwalay natin ngayon itong area na to at saka ito. So magkakaroon tayo ng dalawang compression force dito. That is, compression force sa my flange at saka compression force sa my web. Okay, so take note guys, no? Uh, kapag kinuha natin yung resultant nito, yung compression force natin will be equal to the tension force here. So, bali, no? Yung ating magiging moment nila is equals to the nominal moment na nandito sa taas. Okay? So, ngayon guys, no? Kapag kinuha natin yung moment itong C flange na to about this point, that will be, yung ating mga compute niyan is yung M and flange. Ngayon, kung kinuha natin, guys, yung ating moment nitong C web na to about this point, ang, mati, ang ating makukuha is yung M and web. Okay? So, again, guys, kapag inad natin yung ating M and web at saka M and flange, ang ating magiging result is yung M N. Okay? Yung ating nominal moment na 1022.22. So, yun. So, ito, guys, yung ating equation. M and web plus M and flange is equals to M sub N. Okay, so yung M and flange at saka M sub N is alam na natin to. Ibig sabihin, makukuha natin dito guys sa M and web which is equals to 118.56597 keep feet. So gagamitin natin sa M and web na to guys para makuha natin si A sub W dito. Okay? So para makuha natin si A sub W. Okay, so take note that M and web is equals to compression na sa web. Ito yung guys, C sub web times Z sub 2, which is D minus H sub F minus A over A sub W over 2. So, bali, that is uh, effective depth minus H sub F. Ito yung, guys, na height minus kalahati ng A sub W. Ito yung mangyayari. That is 0.85 S sub C prime multiplied by area ng compression concrete times D minus H sub F minus A sub W over 2. Okay, so, mangyayari dito, guys, is... Uh, 0.85 S sub C prime, A sub C natin is the area of compression concrete, so that is itong area lamang na to guys, which is B sub W times A sub W, na I, I hope na intindihan nyo guys, no, itong area lang sa web yung ating kinakonsider, no, kasi ito yung area ng ating compression concrete sa may C web, okay? Then multiplied by D minus H sub F minus A sub W over 2. So of course, alam na natin itong ibang value na to except yung ating A sub W. So bali, makukuha natin dito guys si A sub W which is 1.853 inches. 
Okay? Ngayon, ay sabihin, no? Makukuha natin ngayon, guys, si A, which is H sub F plus A sub W, di ba? So, H sub F plus A sub W. Ito ngayon, guys, no? Di ba? A ito, H sub F plus A sub W. So, ayun, so bali, no? That will be equal to 4.853 inches. Kasi yung H sub F natin is 3 inches. So, ayun, so yung A natin is 4.853. So, ngayon, so makukuha natin, guys, yung ating area, total area ng ating compression concrete, which is area ng flange, itong area ng flange, plus yung area ng web dito, which is B sub W na 15 times A sub W. So, ayun, so bale, no? Makukuha natin yung ating area ng compression concrete na 216.795 square inches. So, ayun, so pwede din natin kunin, guys, yung ating uh, bar sub Y. So, yung bar sub Y, guys, is yung location nga ng ating centroid, ng ating area ng compression concrete kung saan mag act yung ating total compression force which is C flange plus C web. So, ayun. So, ating formula nun is the Varignon's theorem, guys, that is total area multiplied by bar sub Y equals summation of areas times Y. So, bali, no? Para magkuha natin, guys, yung ating bar sub Y, uh, gagamitin natin itong formula na to. Okay, so again guys, no, ang ating uh, bar sub Y is yung location ng ating uh, compression concrete area na centroid. So, bale, dito kasi mag act sa centroid yung ating compression force, total compression force. So, bale, yung distance niya from the top is bar sub Y. So, of course, pag alam na natin yung ating bar sub Y, hindi eh, makukuha na din natin guys yung ating value ng Z, the distance between the tension force at saka compression force which is equals to D minus bar sub Y. Okay? So, again guys, no, para sa ating pagkuha ng bar sub Y, that is total area. Total area natin is the whole area of compression concrete which is 216.795. Nakuha na natin ito kanina. Okay, is equals to area ng flange. So, iwalay natin yung flange at saka yung web na area. So, area ng flange, guys, times Y sub F, centroid ng flange, plus area ng web multiplied by uh, centroid ng ating web. Okay? So, bali, ang mangyari dito is 216.795 yung ating area ng compression concrete times bar sub Y is equals to 189, guys, yung ating area ng ating flange times yung ating centroid ng ating flange is, of course, kalahati ng H sub F. Centroid na ito is nandito. So, distance niya sa taas is, mula dito sa taas, is 1.5. Plus, area ng ating web is 27.795 square inch. Ito nga yun, guys. Multiplied by ating uh, centroid, location ng centroid ng ating web mula sa taas, that is of course H sub F plus kalahati ng A sub W. So that is 3 plus yung ating H, A sub W kayo na guys na nakompute is 1.853. So kalahati nun is 1.853 over 2. Okay, so of course, lalabas dito guys yung ating bar Y which is 1.811 inches. Okay, so ngayon guys, no, makukumpit natin yung ating Z na value which is D minus bar sub Y. So ang lalabas dito is of course 22.189 inches. Okay, so ayun, so alam na natin guys, itong mga values na to. Actually, hindi naman to kailangan guys, ang kailangan lang natin is yung A sub C no, para makumpit natin si A sub S. Okay, so bali, no, para makompute si A sub S, no, kailangan natin yung equate si compression force at saka si tension force. So, ito na nga, guys, yung ating gagawin. Compression force equals to tension force. Ayun, and then bali, alam natin yung formula ng ating compression force, which is 0.85 F sub C prime times A sub C. At saka yung ating tension force ay A sub S times F sub Y. Okay, so of course, uh, alam na natin, guys, yung ating F sub C prime given na yan, 3,000. A sub C is 216.2. 795, nakumpute natin ito kanina. A sub S is yun yung ating unknown dito, tapos 60,000 yung ating F sub Y. So, lalabas is A sub S equals to 9.214 square inches. At eto na nga yung ating final answer. So, guys, no, you can check this answer na, itong answer na to sa part 3 ng ating video. Nandun itong, sinolve natin itong uh, problem na to sa part 3 ng ating video. Okay, so i-check nyo na lang yung sagot doon. Pareho lang dapat ito. Okay, so yun. So dito tayo guys sa ating example problem number 3 is resolve natin ito gamit yung shortcut design method na ginagamit natin. Okay, so ayun. So this is a non-rectangular beam. So of course, no, kailangan natin i-compute muna si D, that is effective depth, that is 800 millimeters minus 75 millimeters. So of course, lalabas dito ay 725 millimeters. Okay, so ito yung ating given guys, no, sinulat ko na dito lahat. So after natin ma-compute guys yung effective depth natin, no, ay 
uh, dito na tayo magsisimula ng ating method para sa shortcut design method. So, bali no, kailangan natin i-compute dito muna si m sub n. So, para ma-compute si m sub n, of course, gagamitin natin yung m u equals to phi m n. And, of course, yung ating m u is already given sa problem which is equals to 800 kilonewton meter. And, of course, yung ating gagamitin na phi is equals to 0.90 kasi nga gusto natin na maging tension controlled nga yung ating design. Okay, so ayun. So, bali no, m n natin is equals to 888.8889 kilonewton meter. So, yun. So, bali, no, guys. No, now, we have to find out if yung ating value nga ng A will exceed H sub F or not. So, para magawa natin yan, guys, no, kailangan ulit natin mag-assume na yung ating H sub F, yung ating A is equals to H sub F. So, take note, guys, no, uh, para lang klaro tayo, uh, gagamitin natin na symbol para sa height na to is H sub F para hindi tayo maguluhan sa ating mga symbols na ginamit natin sa T-beams. Okay? So, H sub F ito, guys, at ito yung ating B sub F. So, ayun. So, bali, no, ito yung ating area nating compression concrete. Sinasum natin na ganun. So, bali, no, we have to compute our MN flange using this case. So, pag compute natin ng MN flange, gagamitin natin, guys, yung ating formula na compression force times C. Okay? So, yun. So, bali, no? Uh, Iko-compute natin yung ating MN flange, guys. Tapos, iko-compare natin siya mamaya sa ating MN. Okay? So, so bali, guys, no? Kung yung ating MN flange is mas malaki kaysa sa MN, then the compression area is in the flange. Pero kung yung ating MN flange is mas maliit kaysa sa ating MN, then yung ating compression area extends down to the web. So, yun. So, bali, no? I-compute natin ngayon, guys, yung ating MN, MN flange. And it will be equal to... C times Z. So, of course, yung ating C is 0.85 F sub C prime times A sub C. Tapos, yung ating Z dito is D minus A over 2. Okay? So, of course, guys, no? Yung ating A sub C is yung area natin compression concrete na 500 times 150. That is B sub F times A. Uh, yung ating A na ang gagamitin dito, guys, is yung ating H sub F, which is 150 millimeters. So, yung lalabas na MN flange dito, guys, is 1,160.25 times 10 to the 6 newton millimeter. Ngayon, no, guys, kapag kinonvert natin ito to kilonewton meter, ang lalabas is 1,160.25. Ayun, so bali, i-compare natin to sa ating M sub N na 888.8889 kilonewton meters. So, take note that our one, that 1,160.25 is greater than 888. So, ibig sabihin, guys, no, yung ating compression area is in the flange. So, ayun. So, bale, no, since MN flange is greater than M sub N, the compression area nga is in the flange. Or that means that our A is less than H sub F. Okay? So, bale, no, guys, no, alam na natin ngayon that our um, A is less than H sub F. So, ayun. So, ibig sabihin na to, guys, that our neutral axis is somewhere here. So, ayun. So, ibig sabihin, ito lang yung ating area ng ating compression concrete. Okay? So, ngayon, kailangan nating malaman yung value ng ating A. So, bali, we have to compute the A. So, bali, no, same pa din yung ating formula, nominal moment is equals to compression force times Z. So, of course, we know that our uh, formula for compression force is 0.85 F sub C prime times A sub C multiplied by our Z dito is D minus A over 2. Yung A sub C natin is B sub F Ito yung ating B sub F, guys, no? Yung 500 millimeters times A natin yung inahanap natin. So, bali, no? Lahat dito ay given except A. So, A yung ating makukuha dito, which is 111.62 millimeters. Okay. So, ngayon, alam na natin, guys, yung value ng ating A. So, bali, makukumpita natin dito si A sub S na required nga sa ating problem. So, all we have to do is equate lamang, guys, si C kay T. So, bali, compression force is equal to tension force. Okay, so of course, ang ating unknown na lamang dito is yung A sub S. Okay, so A sub S natin is equals to 3,850.17 square millimeters. At ito na nga guys, yung ating final answer para sa problem na to. No? Okay, so i-check nyo guys ating uh, itong final answer na to sa fourth part ng ating video. No? Take note, pareho lamang sila guys ng sagot sa long na traditional na method. Okay, so yun. So that's it guys. So I hope na nag-learn kayo sa ating uh, shortcut method. Okay, so take note guys na kahit na shortcut method or long uh, method yung gamitin mo, same pa rin yung lalabas sa sagot. At saka guys, no, kailangan yung uh, i-compute 
yung fee ulit. No? So, bali no, hindi ko na pinakita dito yung pag-compute ng fee sa ating shortcut na method kasi na-explain ko naman siya, na siya sa ating mga nakaraang mga uh, videos. So, ayun. So, don't forget guys to like and subscribe to my channel no? and hit, also hit the notification bell para sa mga updates ng ating mga new uploads. Okay, tapos kung meron kayong mga tanong guys sa mga problems, you can email me at marcelojuniorabrera at gmail.com and you can uh, message me at marceloabrera na Facebook account. Okay, so that's it guys. Bye-bye!